Hi everyone, it's Marie here today and instead of making like a card or a project on video camera, I want to share this really simple technique. Now this is a really fun technique you can do on all your cards, any kind of paper crafting, and it's just simply heat embossing. Now I know a lot of you already know how to do heat embossing, but when I first started crafting I had no idea that this was even possible. And so when I first saw it, it just totally blew my mind that you could do this with stamps and inks. So I just wanted to kind of go over like a little uh, embossing 101 video and just show you the very simple basics of heat embossing. And there's all kinds of different techniques you can do with this and I hope to do a few more videos in the future um, showing different things you can do with embossing. But this video is just simply for how to heat emboss. So you really only need a few simple items to heat emboss your stamps and you need some ink, some embossing ink. Now there's lots of different kinds of embossing inks. I'm going to be using Brutus Monroe's ink today and I'm also going to be using their Gilded embossing powder which is a really pretty gold. So um, your embossing ink and your embossing powder works together on top of any kind of stamp that you want to use when you want to heat emboss an image. So you just need ink, powder, your cardstock, and whatever stamp you want to use. So I'm using Brutus Monroe's Butterfly Sentiment Stamp Set. I love this stamp set for making quick little embellishments um, that you can throw on any kind of card or scrapbook page or anything. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these little butterflies and just mount it on your block. I'm using clear stamps, but you can use cling stamps, you can use rubber stamps, any kind of stamp you want. And then you want to ink it up using your embossing ink. And just make sure you get a good coat on there. And just simply stamp it on top of your cardstock. I'm going to stamp it up in the corner here because I plan on doing a whole page of butterflies and then I'll be cutting them out and I'll save them for later to use on different projects. Now you can see that you can't really see the image because this is a clear ink. It's just designed to catch the powder and hold it over the image so that when you hit it with your heat tool it, it melts that powder and then you have a embossed or raised image um, on your cardstock. So the next step I like to do is I like to use, if I can find one, a little coffee filter. And I put that underneath my paper so that will catch any excess powder that I sprinkle on. So you want to take your powder Sprinkle it on that image that you just stamped. Tap off any of the excess. And now you can see where your image is because it only stuck to that ink. So using a coffee filter underneath to catch the extra powder makes it possible for you to put the powder back into your bottle and use it for later. So embossing, when you buy a little powder bottle like this, it lasts forever. You really don't use a whole lot at once. Now the next step is just to heat it with your heat tool and that will melt the powder. Now there's a few tips that you might want to think about when you are embossing. First of all, when you're using your heat tool, um, start up your heat tool and let it go for several seconds, um, maybe 30 seconds or something, before you bring it to your paper because the heat will sometimes warp your paper. So if you let your heat tool get nice and hot, it'll melt that powder faster and it'll cut down on warping. So let's go ahead and um, turn on our heat tool and then I'm going to let it just heat up and I'll bring it to the paper and melt this powder. And hopefully you can see it on camera because it's really fun to do.
now that I have run that heat all over that image, you can see that that powder has now melted and you have a gold embossed butterfly. Now after you emboss, you want to give it just a few seconds to cool down because if you touch it right away, you could smear it. So let it cool down and then it's, it's, it's really quick. It's dry now, it's cooled down, it's on that paper. Now I don't know if you can see very well, but some of that powder stuck to other areas of your cardstock and that will happen be just because of static cling. Some of the things that you can do is after you stamp your image you can take a brush and just brush away that powder or you can use, and I like to do this, you can use an embossing um, powder bag or some kind of embossing powder tool that you can put down before you emboss um, some people even use baby powder. I have not tried that, so I don't know how good that works. But the idea of these bags or these tools is it just puts down a little bit of powder onto your paper. You can't really see it unless maybe you do on black cardstock. You can probably see it on black. But um, it cuts down on the static cling, so that way when you stamp and then sprinkle on your powder, your powder is more likely to only stick on your ink and not on the surrounding cardstock. So let's try this again. We'll emboss another image and we'll see if we get a cleaner, um, a cleaner look this time because we've used that tool. So there are some up here that was embossed from the first image, but on the second image, I don't know if you can see, but there's not any powder around the outside. So I'm going to get a cleaner embossing on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put my powder back into my jar, and then I'm going to emboss this second uh, butterfly. That one is now also embossed. Um, I hope you can kind of see on the camera where this um, powder little piece is stuck around this one before I used that static cling tool and around this one there is no powder. So it gives you a cleaner embossed image. So I really like my little bag. I just bought it at a craft store. There's other ones you can get but um, it really helps work. It helps embossed. So you might have noticed on this butterfly I put my heat tool behind the cardstock and that works as well. Some people like doing that better because they feel like it cuts down on warping. I haven't noticed too much of a difference. I usually just do it on the front because I can see when the powder melts and that's just the way I do it. So you can do embossing on all kinds of cardstock, lots of different surfaces. Um, today I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the basics of embossing and that's really it. You just stamp, sprinkle on your powder and then hit it with your heat tool. So this is really all you need to get started with heat embossing. There's lots of different heat tools. I bought a cheap one. Um, if you go for more expensive ones, they heat up faster and they have um, they direct the heat better so that that will also cut down on warping but I find that mine does fine as long as I let it heat up um, for a few seconds before I bring it to the paper and mine I got several years ago and it's still going going strong this is a Doris um, heat tool so lots of different ones um, so, but I find this one works for me and the embossing powder and the embossing ink that Brutus Monroe has is really fun. There's lots of different powders. Um, Brutus Monroe also has a copper one. Uh, you can get clear embossing powder. You can get, so this is clear. It looks white in the jar but once you put it on it is clear. So there's a lot of fun techniques you can do with that so I hope to do a video in the future and lots of different colors. Um, I find that the most, most of the time the powders that I use are clear, white, and my metallics. So those are the ones that are my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out using these dies and my Sizzix. Now these Brutus Monroe butterflies, um, 
they now have dies that coordinate with them that are available in the stores. So I'm going to use these, run it through my Sizzix, and then I'll bring it back and just show you my cute little butterflies. Alright, so I have my butterflies cut out using my dies. And here they are. You can see that the embossing just really looks amazing with that gold embossing powder. I like to make a bunch of these ahead of time and then I can just kind of fold the wings up and put them on a card or a uh, scrapbook page or something. I'll show you a little example of what I've used them on before. I have this little scrapbook page that I did a while ago and I have these butterflies that I embossed on vellum and then I cut them out with uh, the dies and my Sizzix and I just adhered them on this scrapbook page. So they're really cute, uh, you can use them on anything really and the embossing is just such a fun and easy technique and it really adds something extra special to your projects. So hopefully this gave you a good look at embossing, gave you some good ideas on how to get started on embossing. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I love to hear from you or answer any questions you have. Otherwise, have a great day and I will see you again in the future. Bye.